a few videos ago we talked about the counter set and its construction. Now we will use that construction to build the counter function. This function will be great to use as a counterexample for certain properties. And it's amazing because it's a great challenge to our intuition. So if you haven't already, I recommend you check out the video on the counter set construction. So what we did essentially was on each step, k, we had a set c sub k that was the union of 2 to the k intervals of length 3 to the minus k. Now what we will do is call d sub k to the complement of these c sub k's. So it's the complement in the 0, 1. And then we know that d sub k is formed by 2 to the k minus 1 open intervals. And what we will do is name these intervals in order as i, k, sub j, where j will be the number of intervals. So from left to right, it will be the interval number 1, number 2, and so on, until we get to the 2k minus 1. So let's go with an example. We had the 0, 1 was the first step. This is k equal to 0. Then we would remove the middle third and we would have this. And so here, this interval in the middle would be the i supra 1 sub 1. Okay, because here we are at k equal 1. Then in the following step, we would remove the middle third from each of these intervals. So now our intervals would be the i supra 2 sub 1 and the i 2 2, because again, we're at k equal to 2, and so on. And now what we will do is define for each k a function f sub k that will be continuous on the 0, 1. And it's a function such that, for example, for every k, f sub k in the 0, evaluated in 0, is equal to 0. Then f sub k in the 1 is equal to 1. And then whenever we take some number x, that's in the i supra k sub j for some k and some j, f of x will be defined as j times 2 to the minus k. And then on the rest of the elements, because this is only on this interval, so it would be on these empty spaces, on the rest of the numbers it will be defined linearly. So to understand what these functions are, let's actually draw a few. And let's start with f sub 0. f sub 0, that is when k is equal to 0, let's see what the counter set looks like. So this first step, that's the whole unit interval, is c sub 0. So we have no i sub j's. And then the only values that our function will be looking at is on 0 and on 1, and these other values do not exist. So it would be in 0 it has value 0, in 1 it has value 1, and it's linearly on the rest. So let's see how we can do this. It's 0 on the 0. If this is 1, then it takes this value. And by linearly on the rest, we mean that it will do something like this. Okay, that should be a straight line. It doesn't matter. Okay, so this is f sub 0. Great. Now let's continue with f sub 1. That is when k is equal to 1. So again, in 0 and 1, it takes the values 0 and 1. But now we do have one element 
in these intervals. We have the I11 because this would be the counter set, the, the first step in the construction. So the I11 is on the one third and the two thirds. So let's draw that in here. And so this interval here is I11. So what we have to do is give it the value j times 2 to the minus k. So j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1. So the values for our function on this interval will be j times 2 to the minus k. j is 1, k is 1, that is one half. Okay, so let's mark one half. And so in this interval, the function would be constant like this. And on the rest of the elements, we continue linearly. Great, this function is f sub 1. Let's continue with f sub 2. As always, 0 and 1 has the same value. Now our function, it will have the same hole as the other one. And now we are adding these two other intervals, the i21 and the i22. So we will have this middle third like it was before and it will have the same value as it did before, that's one half. But on these other two intervals, we'll have again the middle third removed. And the function will take on the first middle third, it will take the value one fourth. And on the other one, the value three over four. So here we will have something like this constant and a little bit like this here, again, constant. And on the other values, the function will be continuing linearly. Let's see if I manage to do one more example, because the drawings are getting finer and finer and more complicated. So 0 and 1, again, are the same. Then the middle third is 1 half. This third here has this value. And this other one, this value. And now on the next one we will have here a middle third. I will have this value, another third here, and you can see how complicated these functions are getting. And on the rest, we continue linearly. So now let's see what these functions are actually converging to, because that limit function is the one that we will be calling the Cantor function, which is also called the Devil's Stairway, and you can actually see why it's called like that. So on each step, f sub k minus f sub k minus 1, the difference in absolute value is always smaller than 2 to the minus k. It could be 0, and we see that, that for example, on the sets that are repeating, the function will continue having the same value. Also, the functions f sub k are increasing. And they're also constant in some intervals. So actually, the sum of f sub k minus f sub k minus 1 goes to 0. And so what this is telling us is that if we define f of x 
as the limit when k tends to infinity of f sub k of x, then this limit is uniform. So the functions f sub k converge uniformly to this unique function f, and this is the function that we will call the counter function. So let's see a few of the properties this function has. Well, first of all, it's pretty obvious that f in zero is equal to zero because it will be the limit when k tends to infinity of f sub k evaluated in zero. And all of the functions in zero have the same value, so this is zero. Similarly, f in one is going to be the limit when k tends to infinity of fk evaluated in 1, which is also the same as 1. And so what this is telling us is, well, each function f sub k was continuous, and this is a uniform limit, so in consequence, f is continuous. But also, f is constant almost everywhere, because it is constant in those sets that we've removed from the counter set. The counter set has measure 0, so the sets we were removing have measure 1. And so f is constant in those sets, then it's constant almost everywhere. But it's also increasing and continuous, so you can see how pathologic this function is. It's amazing, and, and it's going to be very good for counterexamples because of this very odd behavior that it has. So let's write that down. So this is all we have to know about counter functions. It's going to be the limit of very weird functions such as these ones. I will leave you now an image of a counter function drawn with a computer. That's obviously much better than any drawing that I could make by hand.